Hey guys, Gary from DIY Electronics. So I'm out in the field again today. I'm still waiting on some parts to come in so I can uh, continue on with some electronic tutorials. I gotta find out which way this thing is, wants me to go here. Um, but today, as you've seen up here, uh, my adventure here starts at the Flanders Cemetery in Mayfield, Maine. Actually, um, that is up for debate. Um, the Flanders family actually calls this Moral, not Mayfield. But uh, through the years, the, the town was incorporated probably from somebody from away like Massachusetts or New York, Connecticut, decided no. Um, we're going to rename it Mayfield, incorporated it, and then finally it fell out of incorporation like in, uh, I think, the 1930s or something like that. But we're not here really about the town. We're about the person, um, Flanders, and the one we really want to look at is Alfonso Flanders because it was on his property that the uh, Main State Quarry was found, and that was in Morrill, North Morrill. Uh, Maine. So what I want to do is I'm going to go over there and I'm going to introduce you to um, Alfonso's mother and father and then I will introduce you to Alfonso. So let's take a walk. Now this being a slate town of moral, a lot of these um, gravestones are slate. So unfortunately, slate doesn't hold up too well to expanding and contracting in this area. And it's a shame, a lot of these stones have, you know, literally been destroyed by the weather. Um, we can't even tell what family this is up here on this hill anymore. But anyway, let's go back to the Flanders family because they are the ones that actually found this area. And this is Daniel Flanders and Betsy Collins. Uh, apparently they were husband and wife, but she never changed her name. He was born in 89, she was born in 92. He passed in 58 and she passed in 70, I think that's 78, 1878. So these two produced a child Yeah. And I want to introduce you to Alfonso. All right. This is the mother and father of probably these other kids here, but I just want to concentrate on Alfonso. He's born in 47 and he died in 16. She was born in 45. Uh, I said, did I say 45? I meant to say 47. And died in 16. She was born in 45, died in 24. Now, Alfonso inherited, let me just turn you back around again. Alfonso inherited quite a lot of property when his uh, mother and father died. And that, in turn, he sold a section of the property for $300 because there was a investor named by Edward Kroll that wanted a certain part of the uh, property because it had a lot of slate. And uh, Alfonso said, yeah, no problem, because Alfonso um, owned two lumber yards here in Morrill. And uh, he said, sure, you know, he's, he's no problem with uh, investing, you know. And uh, so he sold the property, plus he invested in the company, the Main State um, Slate Company. And they uh, mined the slate out, sent it down to Skowhegan, which was uh, turned into paint, um, all kinds of, you know, uh, um, sinks and, uh, you know, chalkboards. And a lot of it was uh, turned in, I think they called it marbleized and turned them into, you know, mantles and stuff like that. But anyways, now we're going to take a ride and I'm going to show you the quarry. All right, guys, um, basically, I'm just going to uh, start rolling right now, and I'm going to be quiet 
through the whole trip up to North Morrill. Um, this is a, where I'm going at right now is a uh, turbine field that produces 191 megawatts of power owned by Blue Sky Incorporated. And we're allowed in here because it's a recreational area. And uh, what I'll do is I'm just going to be quiet. We're going to go down to the to the uh, quarry, and uh, maybe during this quietness, I will do a voiceover just to give you some details about the North Moral um, Slate Quarry. So I'll be quiet from here. It's hunting season now. You might see a bunch of people in orange and all kinds of vehicles. And you see right there a whole lot of wind turbines. This field has 63 turbines in it. But enough of that, we're here about the quarry. So come to find out, my investigation was a little bit off on the Flanders. Um, it wasn't Alfonso that sold the property to Edward Kroll. It was Alfonso's brother, Daniel, that sold the property to the Krolls. Um, Alfonso and Daniel both uh, worked at the uh, quarry, and it was also Daniel that owned the uh, lumber yards. It wasn't Alfonso. Um, Alfonso worked at both places. But it was actually Daniel that did all of the, the family um, um, in, investments and whatnot after their parents died. Um, he was the executor of the estate for all the properties. There was quite a few properties out there in Morrill, and, and it was all owned by Daniel Flanders. Um, and then Ed Kroll operated the, um, the slate quarry until 1870. And I really don't know. I can't remember exactly what it was, the reason behind it. And also with the investigation, um, there was two workers that were crushed by falling slate and the bodies were recovered. All right, so let's, uh, I'm gonna put this as a, uh, a voiceover as I'm driving down to uh, North Morrill. guys here we are at the quarry now don't get scared this is a lions and tigers and bears type moment when you when you walk into this quarry especially when you're by yourself it's it's kind of eerie in there but anyways let me turn you around and we'll walk on in right there and here we are ladies and gentlemen this is what people call the, the Mayfield Quarry, the State Quarry, but in actuality, this is the North Morrill Quarry owned by Edward Kroll. And by what the Blue Sky um, investigation did, because they didn't do a lot of archaeology um, surveys of the area. They found out that 
This was owned by a, a gentleman in Massachusetts by the name of Edward Kroll and his family. And they operated this uh, quarry with the help of all the locals, the Flanders, um, Schwartz, Weber, and a couple other names I can't remember. But they mined this from 1860 to 1870. And they got mainly all of the slate out of here by oxen cart. And they shipped it down to Skowhegan where, like I said, it was, it was pulverized into paint. Um, of course, used in schools on, you know, slate truck boards and so on and so forth. And it goes quite a ways back in there. Um, rumor has it there are two workers that are actually buried under that slate. There's a slate wall that fell on them. And I don't know why they never retrieved the bodies, but they never did. That is just a uh, fable rumor. You can't go too far into the quarry because, of course, the bottom of these quarries um, get quite wet and the other problem with these quarries is a lot of kids go swimming in slate quarries and they really shouldn't because you never know how much uranium that you're swimming in because I, I, I've heard that some of these quarries have quite a lot of, of uh, uranium in them I don't know how much further I can go. I really don't want to go too far because there's a cave up at the end and it has been known to have a bear in it in the winter time. But I haven't seen any indications of bears being in here. No scat or anything like that. I'm going to estimate some of these walls are about 200 feet. This is all the further I can go. guys I'm gonna turn around get out of here and I'm gonna end this clip and then I'm gonna go a little bit further well matter of fact I want to show you where they um, produced a lot of uh, slate shingles they got a an area called the cutting shed it's just on the other side of the road here and I'm gonna walk out there and show you the cutting shed had a machine that would take uh, you know a slab of slate and cut it into slate shingles I didn't really know that Maine did too many buildings with slate shingles but apparently they did or maybe they uh, they shipped them down to Massachusetts or some other area now actually I'm going over here because I have a I have a geocache here that I hid a while back. I wonder if it's still here and active. Is it? Huh. I thought I had it over here on this wall. I can't remember where the heck I put it. I thought I had it right up here. 
Probably some muggle got it and I'll have to come back and put it back in service. All right, let's go across the street to the uh, cutting shed or the shingle shed or whatever they called it. Now, just imagine that they got oxes coming down, coming down out of that quarry. Going down here, getting on the road, and headed out to Skelhegan. There was no mention, I can't see any mention of them actually shipping it by train. It was all done by um, oxen cart. All right, we go out here. I'm just gonna give you a quick look over here. You see all the slate. Right down here was the slate building. Oh, that scared me. You see all the pieces of slate that are left over? Apparently the building was up here and then it just slid down here. And that's how they loaded it onto carts. Anyways, guys, that is the trip into the North Morrill uh, Slate Quarry, okay? Don't get it confused with the Mayfield Quarry. That was just something that the locals wanted to call it. Um, you know, name after their town and whatnot, but it was not. It was named the North Morrill Slate Quarry in North Morrill, Maine, not Mayfield. All right, so um, I'm gonna take the road a little bit further down. There are a couple of uh, old foundations down there, which was the Slate Quarry's office. And uh, I gotta, I'm gonna take a ride down there and see if I remember where they're at. And if I can find them, I'm going to uh, continue this video. But if not, thumbs up, thumbs down, likes, subscribe, leave any messages down below if you know anything about this quarry. Um, and like I said, uh, a lot of information has surfaced about this quarry since the, uh, these um, uh, wind turbines have gone in because Blue Sky LLC has done a lot of investigation into the archaeology and everything else of this area. So they have some pretty well documented proof that this is the North Morrill Slate Quarry. Thanks for watching, guys.